you don't like the music, huh? Mm -hmm. You don't like our indigenous American music? Oh, it's, uh, it's great. It's great. I'm privileged to have heard it. We've covered presidential elections before. Well, not me. And we hated it. Hated the pundits. Hated the horse race. And hated the silly questions. So we knew what we had to do. We couldn't care about a White House press pass. And we couldn't travel fancy. And we had to be independent. It had to be about getting one shot to ask one question. But then those questions started fitting together. I'm Michelle Mitchell. I'm Mark Huntley. I'm Ed Head. And this is Common Sense. This is the one topic when we've traveled across the country that people really are losing sleep over. And small businesses are talking about having to have a fuel surcharge now in order to make it. You know, because I'm sure paying a high grain price, and it's putting a squeeze on us, and I'm paying a high fuel price too on that track to run, to run milk around. And yeah. yeah. the tractors, and you know. It's, it's constant. Yeah. You guys are thinking about you might have to do fuel surcharge, right? We have put some fuel surcharges on, and we pulled them back off because the store hates them. <laughs> all the stores we heard it back so but other people are charging them fuel surcharges yeah. everything I get delivered yeah. they have a fuel surcharge I even the trash truck and a fuel surcharge you know is this something you're hearing from your constituents? I, I hear it all the time you know whether it's the pizza delivery guy that comes to our home for our 16 year old son or whether it's it's a, a, a drugstore that's delivering uh, pharmaceutical products. I mean, it, it is a significant problem and it's creating more and more difficulties for cities because if we spend our tax money on gas, then we don't have it to spend on hiring another police officer. I mean, there's only so many dollars. So which numbers are you watching? Maybe these, but more likely these. The cost of fuel affects the cost of just about everything. So where's the bottom? And how are these guys going to stop us from hitting it? Or even can they? Gas prices impact on our economy and all that stuff. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm ready. Uh, we went through a legislative session back in January, February, March, and April, which meant that many of us were driving to our state capital, which is about 45 minutes away. And all of a sudden, I realized I was gassing up before I came home. And the reason was uh, the state capital's gas was 40 cents a gallon cheaper. That's when you scratch your head and say, what's going on here? The attorney general has said that it's not the retailer. He believes it is the wholesaler that is, in fact, creating the situation that makes our prices 20, 30, 40 cents a gallon more expensive than just outside our community. When you talk about the city of Louisville, you know, we buy three, three million gallons a year. I mean, for every penny that it goes up, it costs me 28 to 30 thousand dollars. So when you figure that with that, the, that, that our budget during the budget year it went up a dollar six times 28, 30 thousand dollars you know, you begin to realize what effect it has on city budgets, what effect it has on public transportation budgets, what effect it has in, you know, on school budgets in terms of school buses, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And, and that is a real difficulty that cities across this country are having in regard to dealing with the fluctuation of the gas prices. When you stop and think about, about uh, gasoline or oil being used in asphalt, now all of a sudden a patch of asphalt costs more. So every pothole you fill costs more, every road that you, that you resurface costs more, and the ripple effect on cities is quite significant. You know, when I built my budget, you have the gotta do's, wanna do's, and wish you can do's. Well, I covered all the gotta do's, like police and fire and ambulances and things, and, and, and the wanna do's, the best I could do was a few, and I never got to wish you could do's. Energy is driving everything and the affordability of this issue is going to have a very adverse impact to the middle class, to people's ability to provide for their family, to educate their children, to plan for their futures and their retirements. Uh, you've got people who don't know how they're going to heat their homes this, this winter. Energy, energy costs are driving everything. It's rippling through the entire economy from our food, clothing, our shelter, transportation, communication. You roll that into the current fiscal crisis that we're going with the banking and mortgage meltdown. I mean, we, we're looking at an economic precipice. So I understand that you're uh, running into some hurdles in trying to get anything really substantive out of the campaign flax. 
It is absolutely hopeless. There's absolutely no substance in what they've been telling us. Joe Biden, many trials have come on. I agree. It's, it's frustrating to be asking questions that they don't want to explain their positions on. Hi, Isaac. How are you doing? Is anyone here, Nick, or the film was 11? I spoke to you the other day. Senator Obama is going to be doing a rally. What do we need to do to get access? Bad news. The deadline has passed. For what? Uh, getting access. That doesn't make any sense. every day you guys don't keep a list of those people and let them know oh thank you so much I totally appreciate it well we know real people will talk to us there's this group of town fathers in a place called Abilene in Kansas and they meet every morning at a pharmacy and I know that they'll talk to us how about that thing go off your hand now <laughs> Hi, I'm Marcia. Oh, hi, Marcia. Hi, I'm Marcia. Michelle Mitchell, the CEO of the Chamber. Ron Sugars. Hi, Sugars. Nice to meet you. Hi. See you, Cindy. See you guys. Thanks, Cindy. Bye-bye. <laughs> you guys, though. I've been in the area all my life. I've been in the area all my life. So that's what, 20 years? 70. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much all agriculture in this part of the area. Wheat, corn. Milo, wheat, corn, sorghum, hay, grassland. Would you say this is mostly a middle class area? Uh, pretty much so, probably. Don't you? Yeah. Middle class? Oh, yeah. yeah, I'd yeah. say so. Pretty much so. What's middle class? Yeah, what's middle class? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what's what is middle class? class? Yeah. <laughs> what do you guys think middle class is? <laughs> Working people, I guess. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah, really feeling the sweets here in Abilene because of the fuel prices? Yeah, well, yeah I think it's got some effect on us. Sure. People are taking short trips and they're not, you know, they're not traveling a long ways to, to see stuff and they're, they're just, uh, yeah, it's got, it's got some effect on us, on everything. What about home heating? Isn't that an issue for you guys in the wintertime or? No, oh, it's going to be. It's going to be. It's going to be. If the fuel price stay high, you know, it's going to make propane high and it's going to make uh, uh, the oil high and the electricity probably right now is the cheapest part of it, but it's uh, it's going to be high price too. The fuel prices are going to have to generate that electricity. So yeah, it's all got an effect on it. People on fixed incomes have to make them decisions. You know, do I go to buy medicine? Am I going to buy groceries? Or am I going to pay my fuel bill? So you know, it's going to put a squeeze on them. Yes, it will. Well, when you guys are talking amongst yourselves, what do you guys think is the solution to the fuel crisis? Oh, I don't know what the answer is to it. You know, there's a big thing is if. Uh, the big oil companies, you know, they keep talking about the record sales they've got. Uh, <laughs> apparently, we're getting being taken a little bit, you know. I shouldn't be saying it, but it's probably rip-off money to me. That's the way I feel about it anyway. The, the government probably won't feel that way, but they won't interfere with it. Okay. Sit down here, Gary. This is his chair. He was having fun. Oh, his his name's on the back of this. <laughs> I, I retired from farming, but I'm still involved in it to help my sons. But. So we were figuring out how much $8,000 worth of fuel would versus $8,000 worth of chemical, which are you going to get the most return on? I never spent $8,000 in a year for fuel in my life, and I farmed more than that. And he's having $8,000 in fuel for how long? Three months? Four months? A whole year? How about a month? A month? Yeah. Eight thousand dollars yeah. for fuel per month. Yeah. Now, now it won't run all year, but for this particular season, yeah. Right now, it's a big fuel consumption. On the tractors, uh, it depends on the size of your tractor, but it can run uh, forty some dollars an hour just for fuel. So who's making all the it's money? We thought tractor. farmers were making money. Nope. It's just one tractor. That's just yeah. one of the. Yeah. yeah. That's just one tractor. Yeah. And the combines, it was uh, when we were running them. It was costing right at $100 an hour for fuel per, per, per machine. Because they take a lot of power to run that. And if you get they have big engines Three on machines them. in the same field, you're looking at about 300 bucks an hour just yeah, for fuel. Just for fuel. So you took one truck load of wheat to town, 
a good share of that load of wheat went just for the fuel.